every five people watching this, I guarantee at least one of you had this. This is the classic SpongeBob Body Flush. Welcome home, Rep Pack. It's your boy Marcus here, and welcome to Comfort Cartoons, the channel where I collect absolutely everything from the late 90s, 2000s, and I'm also trying to create the world's biggest SpongeBob and Nickelodeon collection. And I hope you guys are having an amazing day. It's about to get a whole lot better. But if you don't know the drill, SpongeBob merchandise flip. Personal CD. It's about to get a whole lot of brighter rep pack because your boy is here. And man, speaking of SpongeBob merchandise, dude, do you remember those old school commercials? This is just the best, like the one with the grandma in the shower, you know, in the radio. SpongeBob moves, grandma moves. Yeah, you remember seeing your first nude woman? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, for me it was somebody else's grandmother this time. Her name was Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> but those commercials are absolutely amazing. And because of that, I ended up ordering one of these packages because I saw it a lot on eBay. And one of the items was one I remember from a commercial like in the deepest recesses of my brain. <laughs> But I saw it in the thumbnail of the shot, so we ended up picking it up. If you guys are new here, I always do these buyouts on eBay where I literally buy someone's entire SpongeBob or Nickelodeon collection, and we open up on the channel here and see if it ends up being worth more than I paid for it. On the last episode, what was it? 11 bucks? Oh yeah, I mean, after <laughs> every nickel and dime, we could put on the price tag. <laughs> we were done with 11 bucks in like the first two minutes, and then we ended up with like a profit like over 100 bucks. So in this box, hopefully it's just as awesome, but this is episode number three. If you guys didn't see the first two episodes, Make sure you guys go check it out. These have made huge contributions to the collection here, which I'm extremely excited about. First, let's pop it open. All right, let's do it. We got it. Pop this guy open. So, it's a big box here. I did pay a little bit more for this. I will warn you. The box itself, what's in it? The, uh, this is Home Depot, man. It's some quality. <laughs> <laughs> they probably paid at least, I don't know, $1.50. I've been moving a lot, so I know what that's like. But this box in total was $90. Ouch. Yeah. That's pretty uh, hefty. That's a hefty one. I mean, like I said, guys, sometimes you'll see me get some steals in this channel where I got a box for like $11. I mean, I'm going to keep flexing on that one. At $11. <laughs> You're going to ring that out for a while. <laughs> $11 bucks, over $100 in value. But we don't know if that's going to be this time hopefully we're gonna go into it this is 90 bucks shipped out the door everything like that let's get into it okay dude so i'm just gonna give you a little glance i already took the stuffing out dude Harness! i saw a lot of yellow yeah that's a lot of yellow <laughs> from majority yellow but we're gonna get through it guys but before we get all the way into this box i wanted to shout out to limestone picker here's a little clip from his actual video where he went out nickelodeon hunting just like we do on this channel here's a little clip just one little teaser of some of the stuff that he found So he's actually somebody in the Comfort Cartoons community who actually went on his own hunt independently. which was just so freaking awesome. He had an awesome time, which is that's the whole point of all this is having fun. So I'm so glad to hear that. But not just that, he gathered all those items and he's gonna be making a lot just like this to send over to the channel. If you guys wanna check that video out, I'll put the link in the description down below. If you guys wanna get a little bit of a spoiler of what's gonna be in the box, but we're gonna be opening the entire thing up on this channel, adding it to the collection. I'm extremely excited. I already looked a little tiny bit without watching the whole video and he found some killer stuff but without further ado let's get into this box again lion stone pickers video will be down below i want you guys to see that video before we do the unboxing so if you guys want to check that out go check it out should i just start off with why i got this i mean you said without further ado i feel like that's more ado with further ado <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna start with something else so we'll start with that so the item that actually made me pull the trigger is the lunchbox okay because okay. we opened up a lunchbox on this channel do you remember this one right here of course i do this is the most iconic lunchbox in the freaking video there's even a couple people that commented on screen they actually had that lunchbox growing up i own several because personally i think it's one of the best spongebob items that have ever come out for the merchandise but i own three of these and the reason why do you remember when we opened up that roger bumpus book and we saw like he had that actual lunchbox that was such a cool moment that was a dope moment but you know what i also was not dope about that moment what all the things that i saw that i didn't have oh yeah that probably uh made you go crazy huh yeah you think i would look at everything else and be like oh i'm so grateful that i have all these other things no nope not at all but i got the other lunchbox you saw there that was so dope check it out <laughs> 
Oh, dude, that's sick. <laughs> so this was the key item that made me pull the trigger on the box. I absolutely love these original SpongeBob lunch boxes. I only have two or three of them, but this is the only tin one that I have. But did you know that yeah. on the back? Uh, There's an employee of the month tag. Totally knew that. I had a feeling you did. <laughs> <laughs> but we got freaking the employee of the month back here with a little plankton running away. We got a little tiny dent right here. Let's see if we can pop that guy out. I used to work at a body shop. They called me the dent pusher. None of that happened. It did. Oh, see that? Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> they thought I was in the tire pump blowing out the dents, but no. Just pushed them out. So we got this thing brand spanking new. So which would you rather have? Oh, that's a good question. Between the two of like the competition of like the most classic lunchbox. Let's see. Ah, let's see. Okay, so you, this is 2002. So your mom's walking through the store. Okay, Ryan, give me the shopping cart. We got your typical music. This is 2003. You got a little grit on. She's getting hit one more time. You know the drill. But she looks back and she says, you know what? That boy's been through a lot. She's looking at you. When we birthed him, mm -hmm. my pelvis squeezed at the hand range <laughs> and compressed his hands to the smallest form. She's trying to raise that hand self-esteem. And she said, Parker, you can go to school as the drip master. One. <laughs> <laughs> she knew it. She watched Zoe 101. Okay. She knew true. Michael said dripping. <laughs> dripping. I, I started that. that. That's my word. And she said, Parker, I'm trying to make you drip. And she pulls both these out. So this is supposed to make up for my deformity? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lunchbox. Because no one's gonna be looking at your small hands when you see a sick lunchbox holding them. I hope that is the case, you know? Yeah. Not just like, man, that guy's got really small arms but a sick lunch bail. If somebody has a really big truck, it's not like you're looking at their... The point is things make up for things, Parker. Which one are you picking? I gotta say, for me, maybe just because I am a 2000s kid, I think I'm gonna go with this one because I just kind of grew up on these, these little insulated things. I remember I, I used to always compress them into my backpack to make them smaller. So I'm gonna have to go with the right. Oh yeah, man. You already know inside of here is probably an unmicrowavable lunchable. Yeah, you need those cold chicken dunks. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, I bought the one that clearly needed a microwave, but I'm at school. <laughs> Which, what else do you have in your lunch? Whole We're talking pizza. 2003, I'm talking about the introduction of sour gushers I had. Oh, my mom wouldn't let me have candy. Parker, you're bad enough. You are part of the problem. They're not candy, they're fruit snacks. Can your fruit snack do this? Gushers? Yes! What part of that is fruit? They're filled with sour of uh, fruit. Goosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fruit sauce. And my mom was not playing about no Lunchables. I remember having like Lunchables like once or twice. And I remember coming to school and like, I'm king. Yeah, I got a Lunchable. Even though this is smaller than my typical lunch, I'm winning today. Okay, so this is definitely going into the collection. Grail piece for me. I'm really, really happy to have this. I never had this one growing up, but I always saw it. And I'm really glad to have it now. All right, so what are we giving this for value? I'm thinking 20 bucks. Yeah, you can get 20 bucks out of that. This is from 2001. I'm gonna give it 20 bucks because- one. Yeah, this is uh... two years after the show came out. So I'm gonna give that 20 bucks on screen towards our $90 total. So we only have 70 bucks to go. Let's keep it moving. All right, next one out of here. I thought this was really weird. It's kind of falling apart here, but we got a dual pack, a two in one game. I thought it was so odd they even had a sealed game in here, but we have one of the, so I think this is considered like one of the worst SpongeBob games of all time, which is Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. But I remember playing when I was a kid and not disliking it that much. <laughs> And then we have Super Sponge. And I remember I played that one all the way through when I was like eight or nine. So basically SpongeBob just wants an autograph from Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. And they just like can they just keep sending him on like these death missions hoping he just never comes back. <laughs> Gary, I just had a great idea about what to get Patrick for his birthday. Oh no, not you again. Just keep the noise down. What do you want? <laughs> but it says, join the Underground Adventure of SpongeBob searching for 10 lost treasures and the Avenge of the Flying Dutchman. And that was the other thing I did at this time, dude, because you can see right here, THQ, dude, they were famous for like making three, four games, like the exact same. Another example would be, remember King Kong on the Xbox? That easiest achievements ever. <laughs> yeah, they're like for people who are into gamer scores, like easy thousand. <laughs> yeah, but like what they would do is these licensed games, they would make the cover, the everything the exact same, you know, besides the actual system it was played on, but every version of the game was like a complete different game. 
like complete different play style, completely different graphics, everything. But it would have the same title, same cover. It's just a weird thing they did during this time. So this is the Game Boy Advance version, which is completely different from the PS2 version, which went to be the you know greatest freaking platformer SpongeBob game of all time, Battle for Bikini Bottom. All the framework was in Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. So we'd have no BFBB if it wasn't for FFD. All right, what are we giving this thing? I have no it's clue. It's two games. But it's, it's got a little extra skin. <laughs> Of two games that haven't been played though. <laughs> I think honestly you can get like 10 bucks. I'm thinking 20 at least. I was just being conservative, yeah. Yeah. So you got this right here. We gotta go give it $20 again. I think it's a fair price. I think you could get 30 if it was sealed. But it's not. So we're not calling it sealed. I no. still I need a definitive on this. <laughs> if I drop this in some water, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> That's 40 bucks. Yeah, we're at 40 bucks already with just two items. I mean, this is why I say guys, lots are literally the best way to build your collection. It's just I mean, people are trying to get rid of a lot. <laughs> okay, okay, what do we got here? We got a musical SpongeBob digital thermometer. I don't even know if I could bring myself to open this. Honestly, that is so freaking sweet. Guaranteed to be as accurate as those glass thermometers. Seems like it's like something out for it. Those yeah. glass thermometers. I've yeah. been thinking about those ones, but fuck them. Hey, like, we know those are trendy right now. <laughs> it's all about the musical SpongeBob digital thermometer. All right, what are we giving that guy? 15 bucks? Uh, honestly, it looks good, especially because it's like sealed, not sun damage or something. I, for the nature of the product, I can't give it 20, but yeah. I want to give it 20. You know what I mean? If it was something else. All right, we'll do 15 then. We'll do 15 on screen. So that brings us to 55 bucks. So we're at 55. We've got 35 to go. Let's keep it moving. Okay, so this is also another key reason I got this, dude. I almost assuredly, of every five people watching this, I guarantee at least one of you had this. And you can let me know if you had this. This is the classic SpongeBob body plush. Wow. This is as typical as it gets, as original as it gets. This is the classic 2000 SpongeBob plush. They had it at Target, Walmart, freaking Toys R Us, KB Toys, anywhere you can think of, they had this guy. I can't tell you if I had it, but I can tell you that I remember that very vividly. You had some friend that you saw at their house sitting against the wall. Yes, or, or something, yeah, yeah. Like, that was just everywhere. And look at how clean it is. I mean, yeah, we got a little tiny fur. I mean, this is a plushie, realistically. But I mean, the fact that it's used, there's not a stain on it, I'm really surprised. And not just that, I actually can use this one because I have one of these brand new sealed, still rolled up in the thing. So now I have one of these that I can actually use. Oh, wait a minute, dude. This is even rarer. This is the same year that it came out, but check out where it was released. What? So this is the Universal Studios. So I have the Avon version. So the Avon version is from 2000 as well. And it's by the brand Avon, like the makeup company. Literally, it was like a thing they just sold with like makeup and that was the first one that came out. But this is the one that was released at Universal Studios, which makes it even sicker. But damn, dude, okay, so I mean, if you were at the park, that cost you 30 bucks. But the fact that you said a 2000, that means it's 22 years old. That's probably older than somebody watching this right yeah. now. Yeah, my thing is, is that about plushies, sometimes with plushies, they can either go for like $10 or like $80, depending on the person that has it and the condition and what they've got with it. Since it doesn't have the tag, I'm gonna go ahead and say 30 bucks. If you had the patience for it, you could sell it for more. Yeah. Like, you know, if you broke it apart, brand new 2000, Universal Studios, the whole, price, the whole yeah. thing. You yeah. can get more, but honestly, out the door, you can get 30 easy. So I love this thing right there. So we're gonna give it, what is it, 30 bucks? Yeah, 30 bucks, that 55, so what's that, 85? We're at 85 bucks, we got $5 left to go. And I thought 90 was a lot. I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie, I thought 90 was like gonna be a little bit tough, but we're doing it. Okay, next one up, oh shit. Is there a five dollar bill in there? I don't know if you want to see this. Go ahead and close your eyes if you need to, Parker. Uh, I'm okay. We have the games that make you the most afraid. Oh my god. We have Tic Tac Toe. If you guys don't know, there was a time where <laughs> I completely beat Parker into a bloody submission. I mean, it was hard to watch. It was like a Tyson fight in the 90s, man. You were out quick. <laughs> so inside of here, I mean, it looks like it's been used before, but it's Tic Tac Toe, jump. I swear, Dash and Jellyfish. Like, they're two biggest things they use for the titles. So we got, like, what are these? We got some blue and red checkers. And we got stickers put on those checkers. Okay, I gotta give the most credit for the damn board. That's actually kind of cool. Don't rip it, damn. Okay, so it looks like it's like this. <laughs> where's the rest of you? Yeah, where's the rest of the tic-tac-toe? One hour later. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do it for you guys. Just go ahead and, are you ready? Uh, I should have seen this coming. <laughs> so I'm gonna go first. Of course. Okay, you can go first then, Mr. tic tac Um, all right, let's <laughs> find Oh, okay, oh, fine, just go for the most convenient move. Okay, you would have done it if I didn't do it. <laughs> I'm the blue, which you'll see is in the lead. Oh, okay. You went for the last resort, did you? Well, I'm gonna hit you with a little hoo-ta-ta. -ta. Well, I'm gonna hit you with a little hoo-ta-ta, -ta. and I know you're gonna, yeah, yeah. 
much. How much you giving that? Now that I have one. Freaking nothing. Not a dollar. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> all right, for real, another game. About two dollars, three dollars. Yeah. Couple yeah. bucks. It was all made of paper. If it would have like a realistic like board or something, I would give it a higher score. We're gonna give this one three bucks. We'll actually go ahead and put no value on this item just in case we went a little high on anything else. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh, we got a little bag of cars. Okay, okay, okay. So I think we actually did open these cars on the channel before, but we got he, she, see, wombo. It's Not wombology. Bad. It's first grade SpongeBob. And then we got Gary. Oh, dude, Bob. I remember we opened these for Mr. Krabs' car alone. So we had these on the channel a long time ago on ADHD's Life. So we've already featured these before, but not on this channel. But I remember the Squidward car was really, really nice. Watch this one. Oh, please. Whatever. <laughs> But the big bank hang of the set, Mr. Krabs and the Bugatti Chiron. The edit says, me money. <laughs> <laughs> that one is freaking insane. I already have all those cars, so I don't know if we're gonna add them to the collection, but I think we could easily get those two dollars each. Yeah, so boom, we're at ten bucks right there. Which puts you over. All right, so now we're at ninety-eight dollars. So basically, that that means when we get to this point, every single thing else we get out of the box, basically one hundred percent free. We made our money back on it. Now it's just to add it to the collection. Let's see what we got next year. Oh yes, dude. Okay, so this is a big stack of items right here. And actually, shout out to Limestone Picker, the guy who actually did the video I was talking about at the beginning of the video. He ended up finding like one or two Nick Zone books in his hunt. One of my goals, dude, is to collect all of the Nick Zone books. And dude, check out how many were in this lot. Oh, okay, now I can see. Damn, that's like <laughs> at least six or something, right? So to identify what Nick Zone books are, they're the ones that on the top right corner say, well, Nick Zone. <laughs> to me, they're the best ones because they have a really, really high quality cover on the front. They're scholastics, they're hard cover, and the artwork inside of them is really, really good. You know, I love going through these books and showing like all the different illustrations and stuff like that. But we have quite a lot today, but you guys can see it's very, you know, classic. Classic, classic Chupo artwork they have here. Really, really good. But what's most important about these books is they're independent stories that you can only get in these Nick zones. And as a you know Nickelodeon fan, I love just hearing any new stories or seeing the characters that I love in any new situation. You know what I just noticed too, dude, is like, so in the book I read real briefly, so Twister, he twists his ankle. Typical Twister thing to do, I guess. Right. And then he can't film anymore. Remember, he used to film back in the day. Right. But they had to film it somehow. He invented the first ever GoPro. Damn. He strapped it on his head with tape. This is 2003. But Brian will put the GoPro on screen when that came out. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure people had the idea of strapping cameras and things for a long time. But, I mean, that's like kind of crazy. The first extreme sport GoPro was on Sam. So then we have Angelica for president, which is freaking sweet. This actually is an episode. I remember this episode in particular where they had a competition versus each other to see who could win class president. And then we got Fearless, which I clearly remember when I was a kid. I remember this particular Nick Zone. And from what I remember, I think SpongeBob was getting paid by this guy to, like, do crazy stunts. And, like... Like Mr. Krabs kept peer pressuring him into doing like more and more and more insane more. stuff of like, oh, well, you can keep getting peer pressure, but eventually that's going to end very bad for both of you guys. So that was kind of like the lesson to learn from that one. And then we actually have this one in the collection already, but this one's a way mintier than the one we have. We have Carl and Llama Drama. And then next we got SpongeBob Movie Pants, which I actually have no clue. Like it has, a, oh wow, this has nothing to do with the SpongeBob movie. <laughs> The illustrations of these are amazing, man. I love it. But this is actually about them making a movie or going to the movies. I can't wait to read that one. So we got the Super Science Project. Love that one. Oh, man, do you remember what they called magazine zines? <laughs> we got zine seed. The only the reason I knew what the word zine meant was because of this man's daughter, freaking Reggie. She used to have a zine where she would make like skate clips and like, you know, stuff like really cool pictures of like Torshack and stuff like that. Right. But this is the Jimmy Neutron zine zine. And then we got token wishes, which I'm really excited to read what this one is. Cause I'm pretty sure what it essentially is, is maybe you give these tokens to maybe Tootie or somebody else. And that gives them Cosmo and Wanda's ability for like one or two wishes, I would assume. But man, that is freaking sweet. These books are absolutely clean, no writing in the back or the front at all. There's no names, no anything. Super, super clean. I am very, very grateful and happy to add these to the collection. I have no clue. Like, is there even like an ad in the back that shows you like where the other Nick Zones are? Like, literally, I don't even know what Nick Zones have been made or have not been made. There's no like catalog of them. We're just trying to collect them all, but we have a huge stack right here. That was freaking awesome. So how many are there? So we got $5 a book. We got one, two, five, six, eight. I probably could have done that without tipping them over, but. Yeah. 40 point. bucks. 40 bucks. Oh, hello. Free as hell. Yes. I will take those charges. <laughs> 
<laughs> we got freaking forty dollars worth of books for three because like i said we already matched our 90 dollar price tag so this all goes on top of that to bring us to what uh 135 yeah just about we still got more stuff to go so again guys this is why i say lots are amazing all right so we have some plushies here we can kind of rapid fire these so we have a frankenstein plushie which is oh there's a tag on it that's freaking sweet but dude what are these things out of the side of his what are these these are creeping me out oh those are uh like little corks for his porpoise holes. Oh, but for him, they're coral. That makes sense. That's, that's <laughs> gross. Yeah, that is kind of gross. But dude, look at this hype, his platform shoes. I love it. We got these awesome freaking Frankenstein platform shoes. I'm gonna go ahead and give this guy, it's five bucks. Oh, five, okay. Yeah, like how old is it? 2006. Oh. Yeah. Okay, anywhere from five to 10 bucks. I'll do the monster mash. Okay, so five to 10 bucks, we'll go ahead and do seven. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. That's right, like 145-ish. We got him right there let's keep it moving oh dude i love this one <laughs> when you ask your mom for mcdonald's and she says you have food at home <laughs> this ah oh, his foot got blown out no this is probably the one that dropped the freaking couch on his toe <laughs> i'm sorry you guys had to watch that that's one of the most hard scenes ever to watch <laughs> what do you think top three most like traumatic spongebob scenes depends on what you define as traumatic you know what i mean like what you it might think is traumatic someone else might not if not that I think I sent you the clip before. The most traumatic Nickelodeon scene for me ever was when Stimpy destroyed the house in Ren and Stimpy. And like he was so freaking blood boiling pissed. I'm gonna tear your eyes out. I mean, I think the guy who made that show probably had a normal mindset. He probably didn't go on to do anything wrong. But that, it was probably the most disturbing scene other than this one. But unfortunately, he is Mr. Damage Squidward Tentacles. So he is going to go in the greater collection. So here we go. We got a Patrick plushie. This one's also Thai. And there's no tag on this one. So what do you want to say? Three bucks? I don't like the fact that I can even see his fingers. He's not <laughs> fingers. That's like really disturbing. Yeah, I know that the hands were a big problem of self-concern for you, but I think it looks really good. <laughs> you want to do, do five bucks? I'd say three, honestly. Yeah, three or two. Yeah, like two or three bucks. And then we had another one. Maybe we just throw that one. Oh, no, this one's got to be more. This is a freaking plankton one. <laughs> I got an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I love this one way more than this one. They're the same brand. They're but the same damn size. Yeah, but Plankton works better. Like, yeah. you know, it just works better. Like, this one alone can just go in the collection somewhere. I love this. I want to get more of these. I just, like, hide them around the room. So we got two items in here left. Oh, we gotta give Plankton a price though. I gotta get that one 10 bucks. Honestly, yeah. It's just so, there's too much enjoyment out of that. A fully biased $10 bill on screen. <laughs> All right, so we got two big things in here left. The next one up is Six Picks, the game of visual detection. Oh, yeah, yeah, we had something like this from the uh, from the thrift store. Like, oh, yeah, that look and find thing, Yeah, huh? it's basically that, where you find the differences. One image is complete, the other one has six differences. All you have to do is find the six differences before the time runs out. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Sounds Simple. Until you have to do it with one eye closed or the upside down card, <laughs> you know? And also guys, I've been trying to figure this out for a while. So on the back of this is all these kids. If you guys know anybody, or if you are anybody who happened to be in one of these commercials or happened to be one of the kids on any of the SpongeBob products, reach out to me. I'd love to do like an interview with you or something like that to where we could feature you on the channel. Somebody may not be watching this video, but I mean, you could know this girl or this kid right here. So we never know. And I just think it'd be really cool would we go awesome to be able to meet this kid? We've seen this kid so many times. Like, what is he up to? What is up to headset kid? But either way, I'd like to meet him or him. That would just be awesome. I've seen him on so many products. He's a legend to me. <laughs> so like, will that ever happen? I don't know. But I mean, maybe as the channel grows, one day we'll run into one of these kids and we can do like a video. But essentially what you said is correct. It's basically you're trying to guess the cards. But as you do them, you move further along in a board game to get to an end goal. So it's just kind of taking that same concept, but okay, adding a board game aspect to it. Gotcha. I don't know the price on this one to be honest with you. I mean, it's sealed, it's old, it's Mattel. I, I give it like at least 15. All right, let's do 20 then. All right, and our last item here, we're actually not gonna spend too much time on because we might open these in a separate video, but these are actually Burger King toys. But dude, you see Kablammo in there? We got Kablammo in there, we got Pikachu. Pikachu. I just thought that was his tail. No, I just like what Shazam. That's Kablamo, on. yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then after that, we got a Hey Arnold plush. We got a freaking Eliza. I mean, oh my God. Let's see if Parker knows who this is. Come on. You know who I am. Keenan and Kel. <laughs> this is my cousin Skeeter. You know how he does. 
I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he only had like a season, maybe two seasons. Man, you expect me to know that? <laughs> you expect me to know about the urban youth? <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. We're gonna keep those sealed though because I might open those up in their own video. But guys, that was the entire haul. I mean, we gave this 20 bucks. That brought us to what? I forgot my chair was like this. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like around 170. 170, and I would say this easily brings us over to the freaking one to 200 mark. Oh, this, yeah. is, uh, this is the 2002 toys. I mean, it gives us close to the $200 mark. I'm gonna say 190, 200. So boom, right there, we doubled our value. I mean, technically we didn't like triple or quarter value like we do in some of the other ones, but we spent more money, so the doubling was more overall. So I gotta say that was an amazing haul. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, make sure I smash that like button and subscribe if you're new here. We gotta add all this stuff to the collection. And again, guys, look forward to that new video coming out soon where we're gonna unbox another box just like this from somebody in the community, which will be absolutely awesome. You know the drill. Scan it. All right, I know it's kind of hidden in there, guys, but the reason why is that I haven't had a lot of products that could fit back there. I'm really trying to fill in every single spot, and that actually fits perfect. Okay, guys, so we're adding to the Nickelodeon book collection this huge stack of books that we got today. We got all these right here. The ones that I'm most focused on collecting are the Nick Zone ones and also these Tokyo ones, these Tokyo Pop ones, because these are the ones that I grew up reading. Okay, so we're gonna add these to the collection, and boom, that's a nice stack, dude, of the freaking Nick Zone books. That Not looks bad. clean. I have no clue how many Nick Zone books there are. Honestly, I I don't even really want to know. I kind of just like finding them and just seeing how many there ends up being. So we're going to add all of those to the collection right now. Man, dude, look, we're getting freaking full. Very, very soon, we're going to need that bookshelf. And I'm going to keep pushing it until we don't need it. But very soon, we're going to need that bookshelf. All right, guys. So down here, I went ahead and add our lunchbox. So we have this Krusty Krab lunchbox. And we also have the original one right here. I got to fix this guy. But we have that. And I'm actually going to be removing the sponge out of water SpongeBob drink cup. This one came out in Canada. I never really liked this one comparatively, for example, to like the one they released in like Australia and Canada. So this one's going to go in the greater storage now because now obviously, we got to keep all of them for the world's biggest collection, but he is pretty plain compared to everything else we got here. Oh, dude, I do have it. See, I knew I had it somewhere. Oh. This is like the only actual game that I have for my childhood of my SpongeBob games. So I don't have it sealed because this one's kind of hard to find sealed. But inside of this container right here, these are all doubles for games that we have up there. I'm gonna go ahead and add this into there because it's kind of like I want to put this on display because it's kind of ripped up, but it is sealed. So I'll go ahead and put this in this container for right now, and this all hides in the media collection. All right, so we have the Factor Fishy. We still haven't played. That's a trivia game that's gonna be behind here. The skateboard is like a board game collection slash media section. But I also have, you know, now the new six picks. Cause I don't know if we're gonna play this one on the channel. We're definitely playing the Factor Fishy. This one, if you guys wanna see me play it, let me know down below. Me and Parker can try and play a crack at it. I have no clue how many players you need, but we could try it. So that's gonna go back here just to kind of hide until we end up using it. But there's so much stuff back here, guys. We have like the iToy PS2 with the original PlayStation moving right here. If you guys ever wanna see a video on that, I mean, there's so many freaking awesome videos that could be made. So if you guys want to see that, let me know down below. But that's where we're putting that. All right, guys, and here we have all the SpongeBob cards. I'm holding the line up right now because we're going to make sure we had everything secure for this. There's a lot of cards in here ready to fall. I think I'm going to have to clear this section out. We're going to have to reorganize it because there is just too many cards here to fit at this point. All right, and the Universal SpongeBob, I decided to add right here because he's just iconic, man. Like, like when you think about SpongeBob collecting, that is like one of the first things you think of. I mean, even Patchy the Pirate, that's like his go-to item to grab. Oh, my also, fun fact, really random fact. I'm gonna show Parker this right now off camera so we can talk about it. In the Patchy the Pirate video, we show Patchy's collection, and here's Patchy's collection. I'm gonna talk about this in another video too, probably, because like, this is late in the video, so that way people that are like, you know, really can help me out with this. But you can see all of Patchy's collectibles. For one, we have the iconic lunchbox that he shows right here. Do you see this lunchbox? There's something off about it. True. The eyes, right? Yeah. Everything Apache's collection is different. Like everything in there, I'm trying to decide, is it like completely exclusive merch they made for those scenes? Or is it like kind of put some kind of texture over the eyes so they pop more on camera? When you work in the cinematic universe, they do a lot of stuff for tricks in order to make things look a little better. Even small little things you would never guess. So that's very possible. But I also, it's very possible that they were like exclusive merch. I have no clue. And last, but definitely not least, freaking Plankton. I love this plush so much. One of my favorite plushies in the entire 
entire collection now just because the size of it and everything. Going right there next to the Krabby Patty Mill, next to the Gallery Grub. You know, plane is going to be wherever the formula's at. All right, so that was actually it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you guys smash that like button and for sure make sure you're subscribed. You guys are not going to miss all the awesome content posted on this channel. Literally, if this is not your first video here and you're seeing me for the second time now, like seriously, what is your point of not subscribing? Just make sure you subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Hit that post notification so you don't miss the next upload. But I'll see you guys in this awesome video right here, which is an amazing Nickelodeon hunt. I'll see you guys over there. And it's always right back. I'll see you beautiful people in the next one. Adios. Bloop.